Welcome back to Master Glass. I am your host, Livio, and today I am going to taste four pumpkin influenced brews. Two of them are ciders, and two of them are ales. Uh, by the way, you should really wait to see the end of this episode because it took me 26 takes to try to get this intro done for whatever reason. I don't know, but fall is here. The leaves are falling, the days are shorter. It's ready to drink something that's a little bit more amber in color, a little bit more rich than what we've been drinking and get that nice little pumpkin flavor to it. Curiosity here is when we talk about pumpkin and beer, especially we don't talk really about just the pumpkin flavor. We're looking more for like a pumpkin pie. So we want some pumpkin and some spices. And I think I have a really cool representation in front of me with two awesome ciders and two incredible American beer producers. I'm gonna get to it. So the brand that the, the first brand that I'm going to taste here is Ace Cider. Ace is based out of California. Um, they are awesome at what they do. Uh, the pumpkin cider here in this case, uh, as in the case of the next one I'm going to drink, is a seasonal. It's just available somewhere between August to November. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and give this a little pour and a little sip. Now, uh, if you're not familiar with how ciders work, we call them ciders, but what they really are is hard ciders uh, because there's alcohol in them versus regular ciders, which uh, we kind of use as a abbreviated term, but regular ciders do not come with the booze in them. Uh, as you can see, this has a nice rich amber color, uh, a little bit of carbonation, just a touch. On the nose, yeah. The pumpkin here has been roasted, if you tell me, in there, so it's not bland. There's some nice spice to it. Yeah, there's a lot of cloves in here. Very clovey, a little bit nutmeggy. I'm excited to let you know that we have launched a spirits course on MasterYourGlass.com. While you're there, you can also find this t-shirt in the shop. You can find the Cocktail Clarity cocktail book. You can also find some free resources such as flashcards. Just go to MasterYourGlass.com and the course is already heavily discounted, but if you enter the code MYG Spirits, it'll get discounted even more. Let's get back to the video. Yeah. Yeah, apple pie flavors with those baking spices and the pumpkin, but add acid, add freshness to it. So this isn't like the blobby, pumpkin-y, you know, I'm, it's, it's gonna, you know, I'm, I'm gonna have to take a three hour nap after I drink it. No, this is zippy, fresh, but with bold pumpkin flavors in it. Very yummy. I also struggle sometimes because I'm not a big, dessert sweet cocktail person. And so when I'm asked for fall cocktails with pumpkin in it, I usually have to default to the creamy, rich, after dinner uh, pumpkin flavors. But this is a prime example of how you implement a pumpkin and keep it fresh with the spices. Definitely warranted a second sip here. By the way, I do beers not too frequently. I wish I did them more often on Master Glass. I have a, quite a few episodes, but I would love to do more of it. Uh, I do teach the topic of beer at UNLV, the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, uh, but I, I guess I don't do enough of it on the channel, so I'm gonna get more into it. Definitely here, we have a very cool company out of Vermont, uh, another awesome cider producer, which is called Woodchuck. In this case here, their cider color is definitely less rich in color. Uh, we're looking more at almost like a Chardonnay color here. I see a lot more carbonation. I love that because I don't want two ciders to be exactly the same. I'm happy. I can already notice some variation here. The clove is here, but there's more of a banana note to it. The pumpkin in this case here is integrated nicely and gently. There's a lot less pumpkin when you drink it. When you swallow it and everything else goes away, the pumpkin and the spice stays on your tongue. That's kind of a masterful way of implementing the pumpkin in here without making it too blah. 
Really, really nice. A whole different animal, but a little bit more banana clove notes to this one here. Mm. Yeah, big time on the spices. Um, this, this cider here makes the spices shine a, a little bit more and sets the pumpkin as the base. Over here on, uh, in the case of the A cider, I felt like the pumpkin was more the protagonist and the spices were there to support the flavor of the pumpkin. Nonetheless, I would drink both of these. Um, I would probably, I guess, uh, really go with the woodchuck for even a lighter version, so a little bit more crushable version. I would go to the Ace uh, for something a little bit more filling, although as you heard earlier from my explanation of the Ace, filling is not the word, but it just is a little bit more filling than uh, the, the, the woodchuck is. So that's the comparison between those two. Let's move over to pumpkin ales. Uh, now, if you're not familiar with what an ale is, it's basically, fermented with a type of yeast that ferments the beer on the top, typically gives a little bit more of a richer flavor than the lager beer is. And during the fall, isn't richer flavor, funkier, with a little bit more fruity notes, exactly what we're looking for? Yes, we are. This is a awesome brewery out of Brooklyn called Brooklyn. That's easy to remember, right? And this is their, uh, Post Road Pumpkin Ale comes at 5% alcohol by volume. Nice carbonation, a hint of cloudiness in the color. Slow bubbles coming up. Oh yeah, this is definitely beer. I'm getting those nice little beer notes. Nice um, citrusy, hoppy flavor on it. Not much pumpkin, although if I were smelling this blindfold, I definitely wouldn't detect the pumpkin, but I would detect that this is flavored or there's something in there that's not just regular good old fashioned ale beer. So good. Oh my goodness, so, so good. So this rocks because this is a true ale beer with every aspect that you're expecting from a colder temperature style of beer. Big, bold, hoppy flavors, a nice little malty note to it. Um, and the pumpkin flavor is integrated right there. It's not there to take it over. It's not there to say, hey, I'm pounding my chest here. I'm the big pumpkin. I'm here to save the day. No, it's actually here to play well within the ale uh, beverage. Yummy, 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 awesomely done. Uh, next, I'm gonna go to, uh, we're gonna fly from Brooklyn over to Fort Collins, Colorado, uh, where the new Belgium brewery is. This is their Atomic Pumpkin, which is their special release, which has been crossed off, and it's their spicy release. So the cool thing about this pumpkin ale here is they actually add some habanero to it. So this is gonna be a spicy pumpkin, but not spicy like over here where we were having baking spices. No spicy meaning a little bit of heat spice. So also really cool carb carbonation. Also a nice little amber color, maybe a, sl a slight less hazy uh, than we, what we had in Brooklyn. Definitely more pumpkin notes here though. There's a smushed pumpkin pie in my beer right now. If I, as I'm smelling it. Still a uh, beer, right? You can still smell the hops and the, the maltiness of the beer, but there's a little pumpkin, there's a little bit more pumpkin uh, on the nose in the case of this beer here. Oh, wow. Wow. The easiest way for me to explain this is take a nice clean ale beer, a clean version of an ale beer because clean ales can get really, you know, funky, which is why they're awesome. Then take a very nice layer of pumpkin, uh, pumpkin pie, so spiced uh, pumpkin with baking spices such as nutmeg, cloves, all of that. And then on top of that, add a really awesome layer of spice to it very well integrated. I don't know how they pulled this stuff off because 
Um, I get that you can incorporate all those flavors in beer, and I get you do that when you're cooking. That's at the cooking level more than likely when they're flavoring it. But to integrate them where they don't interfere with each other and to make each layer come in and out at the right time, that's pure magic. Uh, because these guys aren't making cocktails. They don't get to control the pour. It's all integrated in the flavor of the beer itself. Magic, magic, magic. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, definitely, if you're looking for more pumpkin flavor uh, in your pumpkin beer, uh, I would go over here to the New Belgium Brewery. If you're looking more for like a, your beer to have just a little zip of pumpkin flavor, then Brooklyn is a match for you. Uh, I hope I explained everything. By the way, how many pumpkins could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck, never mind. Um, I hope you liked this episode. If you did, please give it a like. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, why don't you? It looks like you like alcoholic beverages. It looks like I like to talk about alcoholic beverages. So I feel like we're a match and come back to Master Glass with me, Livio Laro, where you get expert instruction for everyday consumption. And today, well, we're gonna taste ready and fall is here. The leaves are starting to fall. The clouds getting a little bit more cloudy. Ready? Starting to fall, the, sun, the skies are ready and go. Whether they're ciders, which are these two here, or beers. Oh, I'm sorry.